Say what you will about Nikon. That company commits to shit. Two thousand nineteen marked the sixtieth anniversary of the F mount, the bayonet mount that they still use today on their DSLRs. With this amount of backward compatibility, you can use an insane amount of vintage lenses on modern bodies, and it works the other way around too, making vintage bodies compatible with newer lenses. As I have a collection of Nikon vintage lenses for shooting video, and I'm into shooting film as well, I thought. I should probably get a 35mm film camera to use my Nikon lenses on. My goal was to get my hands on the venerable F3, but in my research, a model that's considered to be a little bit of a black sheep of Nikon's flagship line kind of stuck out to me. The device of F4. Released in 1988, 30 years into the F-mount's reign, the F4 was revolutionary. Designed by the famous car designer Giorgetto Giorgetto Giugiaro? Giorgetto Giugiaro. This is the guy who designed the DeLorean. It was unlike anything before it, and unlike anything after it. Like the DeLorean. It kind of encapsulates the transition point between what SLRs were and what they've become. And as with many things that are ahead of their time, people fucking hated it. In fact, Nikon continued to make the F3 throughout its entire run. But this thing is an absolute marvel of 1980s engineering. Even though it is probably the most complex SLR ever made, with 1,750 parts, it manages to give the impression of being a solid object. It looks like a Ferrari and feels like a gun. Mine is the F4S, which has an added vertical grip. It takes a whopping six AA batteries. The thing is a damn beast, and it's also a lot of fun to use. The F4 strikes this perfect balance between automatic and manual. Even though it does have a ton of automatic features, everything is represented by physical controls. One of my favorite things about this camera is that all of the controls lock. You don't have to worry about any of your settings being changed by taking it in and out of your bag or just brushing it up against something. Let's take a look at some of the features. It has a motorized film transport, losing the film advanced lever of older models. Getting a roll of film in and out of this thing is as easy as it gets. Continuous shooting up to 6 frames per second, has a max shutter speed of 1 8,000th of a second, tracking autofocus. Compatible not only with the screw drive AF lenses of the time, but the discrete motor AFS lenses to come out nearly a decade later, matrix metering, and exposure compensation, and possibly most of all, ergonomics. This is when they started making cameras shaped to fit in your hand. Although it is technically compatible with the newer G-type lenses, because of their lack of a physical aperture ring, you are limited to program or shutter priority mode. But they do work. It can use glass made 30 years before its release as well as 30 years after. Completely insane in the age of planned obsolescence. Nikon! So in conclusion, the Nikon F4 is a camera that everyone hated at the time, but it has aged extremely well. And 
because some of that hate I think is still there, you can get one for a really good price. You can probably get one cheaper than either an F3 or an F5 because it just has this like this black mark on it. But don't let that stop you from getting your own because the F4 is a wicked awesome camera. Okay, that's it. That's the end of the video. I hope you liked it. If you do, hit like. If you like it a lot, hit subscribe, ring the bell, get notified. New episodes every Thursday. If you have any comments, leave them below. Nice comments, lovely comments, hopefully. Any ideas for videos, anything you'd like to see, please just shoot them. Shoot them all over. And I will see you next Thursday.